Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at how to catch and climb in thermals with your RC glider. So throughout this video I'm going to be using my discus launch glider but these techniques can all be transferred to other kinds of gliders whether that be like a powered foamy or a big three or four meter glider that you gotta launch with a winch or a bungee. Uh, all the things are the same as far as the technique goes. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're first gonna take a look at what is a thermal and then we're going to take a look at ideal conditions to catch thermals in and then we're going to finally go over how to catch a thermal and how to gain altitude in one. So let's get into it. So first let's take a look at what a thermal actually is. So a thermal is basically a rising column of air and to get that rising column of air you need the sun. So the sun heats up the ground all right and then you get rising hot air. So that's not the only important part about a thermal though. So yes we have this rising hot air in the middle but this air once it rises more air comes in at the ground level okay and then it goes into the center and then rises up and then this air just keeps going up and it actually widens at the top. So you kind of get this hourglass looking shape and that is basically what a thermal is. And an important thing to note about a thermal is how it sucks air in at the bottom, at the base where the sun is heating the ground up. So if we look at a top down view and I represent a thermal with just a circle like this, okay, we're gonna have air at ground level coming in to where that thermal is. And this is a very important because this is a way that you can track thermals down. So if you are standing here, okay, there'll be a breeze basically going towards the thermal. And if the thermal moves over here, there will be a breeze moving towards this thermal. And also if this thermal were to move left to right like this, the breeze will change from going in this direction to this direction. And these are important things to take note of because the breeze is a very good indicator of where the lift is. So let's go and talk about the conditions that are ideal for thermaling. Okay, so we're out in this field. I got my glider out. So before we try to catch some thermals, let's talk about some of the conditions that will give you the best chance at catching thermals. So. First off is the location. So you wanna find a location that's very open and preferably you don't have trees lining the sides of a relatively like small field because when wind blows over the tops of trees into your field, it creates a lot of turbulence that is just not fun to fly in and it's a lot harder to find thermals. So there are some trees lining this area so it's not ideal, but it's a pretty big field. So hopefully we don't run into too much of that. As far as time of day to fly, usually between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. is the best time because that's when the thermals are biggest. So in the morning, they're kind of just starting out. And later in the afternoon, uh, the sun is starting to go down, so you get a lot more sink, um, which is no fun to fly in either. So especially if you're just starting out um, or if you just want to catch some big thermals, you really want to give yourself the best fighting chance with your location, time of day, and also weather. So. As you can see, we got a lot of big puffy clouds out today, and that is a sign of a lot of lift. And also, the less wind there is, like constant wind, um, tends to be better. So it's really low wind today as well, so really good conditions. Wind kind of just destroys thermals, pushes them out of the way and things like that. Some really good conditions out here today, so let's go ahead and try to catch some thermals. Okay, so in general, when you're trying to thermal, you want to try to fly downwind. That way, when the wind changes direction, it indicates where the thermal is because the thermal is sucking up air. So generally there'll be like a breeze towards the center of a thermal. So I'm just gonna be launching and flying in the direction that the camera's pointed. So we're kind of gonna ignore that aspect today because the wind's kind of all over the place. So we're just gonna be guessing. So we'll go over all the other aspects, but you want to use the wind to your advantage 
because basically where the wind is blowing is where the lift is usually and if there's an overall breeze that day you have to take that into account because um, just because there's that overall general breeze doesn't mean there's just lift downwind all the time so also the change in direction of the wind helps so say the breeze is going towards the left and then it starts going towards the right more there's probably a thermal going left to right in front of you but we're going to ignore that we're just going to go over the basic way to fly and run into a thermal so you want to fly perpendicular to your line of sight like this so that way it's very obvious if your airplane's going up or down because obviously if your plane's going up you're probably in lift and then you want to start circling to stay in the lift just like you see a hawk or whatever doing you see them circling they're in a thermal and you can actually use them to indicate lift as well so I think there's lift here I saw the plane go up a little bit so I'm gonna start circling and see what's going on so I'm circling mainly with the rudder you don't want to use much aileron because that messes up the efficiency of your wings so you want to circle mostly with the rudder and so you can see we're staying at the same height maybe going up a little bit so we're definitely in lift and you want to adjust the circle to where you think the lift is the strongest so I think it's stronger a little bit towards us so I'm actually going to move towards us and circle more and you just look at where you think the plane is going up the most during your circle. So I thought it was going up the most towards us. So I flew a little bit towards us and then, re and then resumed the circle. And yeah, we're definitely in some lift here. So now we're getting pretty high up. And on a day like today, you can just kind of get stuck up here because there's so much lift. And uh, you can get some really long flight times. It's very rewarding. So that's why I, I said give yourself a fighting chance with the conditions, especially if you're new, because uh, especially if you're starting out with this stuff, like getting a, a couple minute flight for the first time is super rewarding. It's so much fun. Even me, I've been flying gliders for years and it's still so much fun getting a really long flight. So you can see I'm just like flying around up here. Um, so I came out of that thermal. Now the sun just went behind a cloud, so the thermals are probably going to die for a little bit. Might be some residual lift. But you can see I'm just still looking for lift. Oh, there might have been some there. Could have been a breeze. The main difference I noticed between when you've just flown into some wind or flown to lift is usually when you fly into wind, the wing lifts up and usually when you fly into lift the tail lifts up so I saw the wing lift up there I thought it was lift so I'm circling and you can see I'm sinking so that was just wind and now we're just in sync and when you're in sync you actually want to nose down and get out of the sink if you just try to glide in the sink then you'll actually sink more than if you nose down and just fly really fast and get out of the sink. So once again, I saw the plane just start rising over here and I started circling and sure enough, there's lift. Circling with the rudder. And I also click into my thermal mode when I think there's lift and when I start circling. And my thermal mode has the camber of the flaperons is increased. So that means the flaperons are drooped down a little extra. And that gives a little more lift, a little less speed, so it's easier to circle and you can climb faster. So that's definitely a mode that you want to have with your airplane that you're flying, whether it be you know a DLG or something else. So the wind's blowing left to right, so that probably means that this thermal is going to drift left to right. Uh, so I've kind of stayed in the same spot so I'm going to fly a little bit to the right and see if I can find it again because I kind of stopped going up. So we are using the wind a little bit as an indicator. 
So the wind indicates where the thermal is. Once you've found the thermal, the wind indicates where the thermal will go. Because the wind is just helps you kind of guesstimate where it is, but you have to use your plane and what it's telling you to actually figure out exactly where the thermal is. So I'm going to land and try not to run into this fence. Because I uh, stopped finding enough lift to stay up. All right. So that was a five minute flight. So that's uh, pretty good for me. And you can hope, maybe you can see, it's probably like one pixel big on the camera. There's some birds up here, up to the right. So you can see he's going in a straight line. So he's searching for lift. And then if he finds lift, he'll start circling. So uh, he might be out of shot. But at the right, he's actually starting to circle. So I'm going to launch towards him. All right, we'll fly towards him. I'm going to launch into the wind. And then fly in that general area. And maybe we'll run into lift. So I'm flying way over towards him. I'll do a few circles just to see if I start going up. I didn't really see many indications of lift, but yeah, it looks like there's lift. So the birds know what they're doing. If you can find a bird, and then just, you know, go below where they're circling or right with them, if you can get that high, like they know what they're doing more than you do. So when they're circling, they're in lift. And look at that, we're way up high now because we followed the bird. So that's another tip. That's a gimme. When you see a bird circling near you, go for him because they know where the lift is. So now we're way up high again. I hope that, uh, hope you could see that in the camera. And now, oh my God, we're in huge lift. I'm actually gonna fly away from it because uh, I don't want to lose my plane. It is kind of dangerous on a day like today because there's so much lift. So uh, I'm going to put it in, I don't know, I'm just going to put it in speed mode and do some aerobatics to get out of here. Don't want to lose my plane up there, and you guys can't see it up there. I'll bring it down, do some loop loops. All right, so we're at a good altitude again. I'll, I'll resume my, you know, passes perpendicular to the line of sight. Just searching the entire area. So just go back and forth, back and forth very methodically. If you're not trying to use the wind to indicate lift. Otherwise, you know, fly where the wind's going and then do your passes in that general area to try to find the lift. And we're just kind of going up in general. So if I just start circling and popping in thermal mode, here we are gaining altitude. So excellent conditions today. <clears throat> so let's review the basics. So you obviously launch into the wind and then you want to fly downwind. Use, use the wind to your advantage to indicate where the lift is and then go to that area and then do passes perpendicular to your line of sight. Okay, and then when your plane indicates lift, whether it's tail up, wingtip up, the entire plane rising, then you wanna start circling. Pop it in thermal mode. Okay, if you notice you're going up more in a certain portion of your circle, move your circle in that direction so that you're in more of the lift. And also when distinguishing, trying to distinguish between wind and lift, obviously pay attention if there's a gust of wind coming. And if you're pointed into the wind and the wing goes up and the tail stays put, that's probably just the wind, it's probably not lift. If the tail goes up in those conditions, it's more likely to be lift. And all of this is a lot of guesswork. 
And really the only way to get better is to practice and get better at guessing. So between last summer and this summer, I've gotten a lot better at guessing. <laughs> Just by flying a lot. So now I can say I'm decent at it. I don't know if I'm, you know, super good at it. A day like today, I'm good at it, I guess. Staying up here a long time. So, you know, that's pretty much it. You can see I just went up a ton, just flying straight. Huge indication of lift. I'm gonna start circling. Just lift everywhere. Sun just went behind a cloud, paying attention to that. So this uh, thermal might die soon. And, you know, flight to flight, launch to launch. A lot of times when you, after you get a really good flight, all the thermals die and you can't find any of them and you get like a really sad flight, but that's okay. You just launch and search again. So, I, so you can see, I know that the lift is in this general area right in front of us. So you know, I'll do some circles and I'll cruise around. I'll pay attention to what the airplane's doing. We'll do some more circles somewhere else. I know the lift is in this general area, so I'm staying there, but then I'm also trying to find where it's the strongest. So I'm, I'm kind of doing figure eights right now. So I'm not really finding anything, so maybe I'll go a little closer to us. You know, just look around. Not running into anything, it looks like. No real indications. Maybe there? Was it a gust of wind? Could have been a gust of wind. Ooh, it's going up, I think. Could be because I'm flying towards myself. That's why we fly perpendicular to the line of sight. Because when you fly towards yourself, it looks like your plane's going up. And when you fly away from yourself, it looks like your plane's going down. And you can't really tell if you're climbing or sinking um, in real life. You can only really tell that when you're flying like this perpendicular to your line of sight. So we did get a little bubble over there and we maintained our altitude. So thermaling isn't necessarily about going up. If you can maintain your altitude and extend your flight time, that's good. That's positive even though, you know, the goal might be to, you know, climb hundreds of feet way up into the clouds, but you can maintain your altitude, you're doing something right. So you can see there's like really light lift here, and I'm just flying around. I might be sinking a little bit. Yeah, I'm sinking. Okay, so not that much lift. There was a little bit, a couple of seconds ago. So I'm gonna land now. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something from this video and I hope if you have a glider at home that you go out and try to catch some thermals now. And even if you don't have a glider, I highly recommend you try flying one because there's really nothing like catching some lift and then being able to fly longer than you really should be able to. There's really nothing like that experience anywhere else in this hobby uh, and it's really rewarding so I really recommend um, even if you haven't flown gliders at all that you give it a try because it's just so much fun and with that said please leave any questions comments or video ideas you have for the future down in the comment section below please like this video if you liked it and get subscribed to see more content like this in the future thanks for watching